All right, so we've talked a lot about what Chart.js is really, really good at. Let's talk about what it's maybe not so good at, and that is to get our chart out of the web. Let's say we want to create an image that we can share online or in part of a report or something like that. Or let's say we want to be able to continue working on the visuals in a tool like Illustrator where we have a lot more kind of control and drawing tools and stuff like that. Um, and unfortunately, right out of the box, Chart.js just does not allow this. But with some additional tweaking and some tools that I've made for you, you should be able to do this really easily and use Chart.js as part of a larger workflow if, for example, you want to work with Illustrator or use your charts in another context. So here again is our world population chart. We're probably getting kind of sick of looking at this. And um, we need to add a couple of things here to make this work. The first is I've included some additional um, code libraries for this to work for you. So the first is this tool called Canvas to SG SVG, um, which is really awesome. I got a link here for that. Um, but you could just duplicate this, um, this sketch if you wanted to work with it. And then um, this these functions called uh, in this file called export.js. And this uh, is one that's a create a PNG link. It'll create a link that you allow you to download a PNG. And then the same thing for an SVG. Now, um, there's not a ton of stuff here, but it was a little tricky to figure out how to make this work. So I've just gone ahead and done that work for you. We're not gonna talk about how it works, but you'll be able to just kind of use it in your project if you want. So there's a couple of things that we need to do here. Um, the first is I'm gonna go down to my options and I'm gonna add a couple of things. I'm gonna uh, turn off animation. We can't animate if we wanna export to, um, to a static image. So we're gonna turn that off. And when we run this, what we see is that the chart just gets created. You didn't actually see anything happen there um, because it's not doing that kind of like loading animation. And then we're also going to turn off this setting called responsive. And responsive means, uh, you can see now it's really, really small. Responsive means that it shrinks and uh, expands to fill the, the window or the container that it's in. And again, we can't uh, export something that's not at a fixed size. So I turn both those off. If you forget to do those, you're going to get a warning from the code I've written reminding you to do that. So don't sweat. You'll just get a friendly reminder. Um, and the cat is back again. Khan, this is like the worst spot for you, pal. All right, say hi again. Khan, gotta go boss. Okay, we'll see if that lasts. All right, um, then the next, so the next thing I wanna do then is specify the size for my chart. And um, we can do that by creating a variable at the top. I'm gonna create, call it width. Let's make this 900. And 600, you could experiment. And the nice thing here is that this is really easy to find and really easy to change in your code. You don't have to dig through to find where that was. All right, then we need something a little funky. And again, if you want, you can just copy and paste here. Um, we need to, let me just make sure you can see that. Yes, okay. Um, we need to grab the, um, the canvas element where our, so canvas is like the actual spot in our web page that our chart is being drawn. So I'm going to say um, context equals document dot get element by ID. Again, you really don't need to sweat this. You could just uh, grab this. So I've got my canvas and then I'm going to say context dot width is our width. Context dot height is our height. There's probably other ways to do this, but this is going to then resize our chart to the dimensions we requested. You'll notice now it spills over because obviously it's much bigger than what we can see on the screen. Um, but this is a fixed size. If I resize, it's not going to change. Cool. So all that's preparation. And really, that's all we need to do to get things ready for um, for doing this. So then what I want to do is create a link. I don't necessarily want it to automatically download every time because if you're working, kind of a pain. Um, so I'm going to use the function create PNG link. And that's part of this export JS file here. And it's going to require a couple of things from you, a couple of parameters. The first is um, a file name. So I'm going to call it chart.png. You might call it something else. Um, then we have the link text. So I'm going to have it display the words export PNG. And then it needs our chart. This is the chart that we made. So we send the chart into this function and it's gonna generate a link 
that will allow us to save it. So it is important that this happen at the very, very end after you're done with everything else. So now if I run this again, it'll be a little bit hidden. <laughs> the cat is back. Um, it's down here. It says export PNG. Hopefully you can see that. And when I click it, it's gonna prompt me to download the file. And if I do that, hopefully we can see Oops, <laughs> stuff from the other demo. Uh, hang on a second, let's just, there we go. So there's our chart, it's a PNG file. And um, <laughs> sorry, this cat is a total nightmare this morning. Um, and there it is, it's a PNG. So this is rendered out. You could easily you know, share this on social media on the web or whatever. Then let's go ahead and create our SVG. So a PNG is an image file. SVG is a vector file, which means that we can open it and edit it in Illustrator and it's all shapes, it's not pixels. So we'll say create SVG link. I'm gonna also send in a file name, chart.svg. I'm gonna have it say SVG here. Uh, we have to send in the chart and then we actually also have to send in all of our options here. And the reason is it actually re-renders your chart to a new location, um, kind of off screen that allows us to download. You don't need to worry about the details, but this is kind of how it works. Um, one other thing I'm gonna add here just so that the link looks nice, is I'm just gonna add a little comma and a space here cause it's gonna combine them all together. So now again, let's see, can you see that? down below, it's really tight, but um, you can see it says export PNG and then SVG. If I click on this, it's gonna again prompt me to download it. And it's gonna, um, in this case, it's also gonna open it in the browser. Now you'll, you might be saying, um, Jeff, that looks cut off. It does look cut off here, but I promise it's not actually. We can open this in Illustrator. So I'm just gonna drag this into Illustrator. You might get an error. You can ignore that. That's no big deal. And then boom, there's our chart. So there's a few things then we might want to do. Obviously, we're not going to get into the details of Illustrator here. Um, but if I click on it, you'll notice that it's all grouped together um, because that's how this kind of works. So if I right click ungroup, now I should be able to select all these individual shapes. There might still be some grouping or just like order issues, but we can, oh, it looks like that's grouped as well, or as a clipping mask. So you might have to kind of like undo a few layers of things. This is grouped. So there's some groups here. It's kind of a pain in the butt, ungroup. There we go. But you can finally, you can get to these individual things. And then the really nice thing here is we can adjust any setting you can do in Illustrator. So these are all totally editable. Um, so you can change color, you could do gradients, um, you know, whatever crazy things you can kind of dream up that might be very challenging or impossible to do. You can add annotations. Um, this is edit editable text, so you can change fonts. All that stuff is in there. And this is a really nice, easy way to generate the graphic pretty close to what you want and then go into Illustrator or even just as a rough version, go into Illustrator and make changes. So again, you will need to add this extra code to your project and you will need to add these things here, these links, um, but hopefully that makes it really easy for you if you're interested in using some tools maybe that you already know um, as part of your visualization workflow.